Welcome to the Wathmen. My name is PJ Yench. Tonight we've got a lot of information to go over. Occupy G8 Summit going on today, tomorrow. Protests have been going on for about a week. We're going to start off with a clip of young man tearing down the banner of the NATO Summit. police brutality down there. Um, at least 45 people have been arrested, at least, yeah, just on Sunday alone. Um, Audrey Campbell, a member of Occupy Boulder, who I know personally, was hit in the face by a billy club while protesting at the G8 summit. Um, here's a picture of her afterwards. I think it's really hard to justify hitting a girl in the face with a billy club for anyone. I don't know what your views are, but, you know, I don't... I, I think the only reason I can imagine a police officer would hit a girl in the face with a billy club is to provoke violence from the men around her, or, uh, or her, or the girls around her, or whoever. Because, you know, when you see someone who is obviously stronger and more well-armed, um, brutalizing a woman or a child or anyone, it makes you very upset. And your first, my first reaction is often to respond in kind. Um, and I know at a peaceful protest that's you know, I mean, that's the one thing that will give the police an excuse to do whatever they want, if you act violently back. And so, Chicago PD, shame on you for being a bunch of brutes in uniform. Uh, here's some more clips of the police brutality that's been going on down there maybe over an hour ago here, where it appears that a uh, member of the protest group was struck by a Chicago police vehicle. There is, has been some video that has been uploaded by members of the protest group. Something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I've got to beware it's bad lines being drawn Nobody's right If everybody's wrong Young people speak in their minds They're getting so much resistance From behind the other side This particular clip, I think, really illustrates the brutality of the actions of the Chicago Police Department. Um, in this clip, there's a young man who is in the middle of the crowd, and a Chicago police van hits him going about 20 miles an hour. and doesn't stop. He continues. The man is fortunately not run over. He's able to kind of maintain balance in front of the van, but you'll see it's, it's incredible um, that anyone would do this. If, 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 if I did that with my car, if I just went out and got in a car and hit somebody going 20 or 30 and just kept going, I'd be arrested. I'd be thrown in jail for attempted murder. 
Three members of Occupy Chicago G8 have been charged with domestic terrorism. Um, the charges say that they were trying to make Molotov cocktails and were planning on using them against several buildings in, uh, in Chicago, namely Rahm Emanuel's house. Um, and from what I gather, having listened to a lot of news reports, um, and read a lot of news reports on the subject, is that the only people who were planning to do any damage to Rahm Emanuel's house or any other buildings in Chicago were the police plants who were trying to instigate them to act violently. And that they were not, in fact, trying to make Molotov cocktails, but the owners of the house were brewing beer. So take a look at this clip. While world leaders gather in the U.S. for two important summits, police in Chicago arrest three activists they say plan to violently disrupt the upcoming NATO summit there. The three men are being charged with domestic terrorism. Their bail has been set at one and a half million dollars each. Among their targets, according to Chicago police, President Obama's Chicago campaign headquarters. He's still quite shaken from being held by police for nearly a day. Darren Anusek explains what he says it was like to be shackled for 18 hours without an attorney to speak to or a place to go to the bathroom. We were handcuffed to a bench and our legs were shackled together. Um, we were not told what was happening. Darren was part of a group that marched here from Philadelphia. He was staying with these three Bridgeport residents as part of a couch surfing deal. When their apartment at 32nd and Morgan was raided by police Wednesday night, nine of their guests were arrested, suspected of conspiracy. They came in with guns drawn, broke into um, uh, a, a unit that was not housing protesters in order to get to another unit in the building that was housing protesters. The hosting tenants today say the accusations of Molotov cocktails in their home is preposterous. It's beer making supplies that police found. If anybody would like some, I would like to offer to the entire universe a sip of my beer. I have two different kinds of beer right now, an India Pale Ale and a Stout. I believe very strongly in nonviolence, and if I had seen anything, anything that even, that even, um, that even resembled, you know, or any plans or anything like that, I would not have been there. These activists asked us today to ask the city why were they held, to which the superintendent told reporters. We're not going to talk about it. We, we just are not going to talk about it. It's an ongoing investigation. Last night at approximately 1130, the Chicago Police Department broke down a door without a warrant, uh, without, uh, uh, with, without permission to enter and they broke into uh, a residence uh, of an apartment that was not an activist in order to gain entry to a second apartment unit where there were uh, multiple activists staying, uh, Occupy activists. Uh, there were two people detained in the uh, first raid. Uh, no warrant was provided. Uh, they were questioned and then broke into the second apartment building, uh, uh, sorry, apartment unit, and nine activists were uh, taken in custody. They're being held right here in the Organized Crime Division of the Chicago Police Department. Uh, we've been trying all morning and all afternoon to locate these people. We've called uh, police officials at every level trying to find out uh, where they were being held. Uh, we were denied any information at all uh, about any people being arrested, let alone a raid happening last night. So essentially these people were disappeared for more than 12 hours until we could finally locate them. Uh, they, they came back, the police, uh, four, four hours later and provided uh, what they claim was a search warrant. It was shown to the, uh, to the tenants of the building but not provided not given to them and there appeared to be no signature uh, by a judge uh, so it's questionable what kind of documentation they were given according to testimony that they just provided here uh, they're uh, peaceful they have no uh, plans of criminal activity uh, police seized uh, beer making equipment and a cell phone apparently possibly among other items uh, but no indication that any uh, 
criminal evidence was seized. And police are still, to this moment, denying that they have anyone in custody or that any raid happened. They mentioned that uh, the arrestees are stressed and confused. They don't know why they were arrested. And they're currently being held shackled hand and feet. Uh, and we have no idea why. In, in the United States, we should be protected under the Constitution from unlawful search and seizure. It's not okay that police come in, break down a door without a warrant, arrest people, and take them away and not indicate where they're being held or, or anything about their situation. So, I mean, maybe that happens in other countries, uh, but it certainly shouldn't happen in the United States. And uh, that's why police need to be held accountable. Uh, they need probable cause to uh, come into a residence. They certainly need permission to uh, search a residence if they don't have a warrant. And if they're going to violate people's rights, then we're going to hold them accountable. So the owner of the house is brewing beer, and the police, for some reason, target these people and first try to convince them to do damage to buildings in Chicago, and then, uh, when they're unsuccessful, charge them with terrorism that they never attempted to or physically could have committed. Now, they were also accused of having swords and uh, throwing stars, which, I mean, as terrorist weapons, that's kind of ridiculous. This isn't the, you know, 1400s. Assassins don't go around carrying a scimitar. Um, second of all, what seems to be happening is that they're targeting these guys for a reason. A few days before this, uh, the same people were pulled over by Chicago PD and harassed. Take a look. Oh, there's, oh, okay, that's fine. You guys got something planned for next week? Not really. No, nothing? No plans on the, the nothing on the horizon? Nope. Nothing. nothing on the horizon? No, nothing? Well, I'm just saying, if I see people with their face covered, I'm just checking with my sergeant to make sure it's still legal that if people walk around with their face covered with a bandana or a mask, I can lock them up. Now, I've got the clip in here. Um, and so, so you hear that they're talking about, uh, the police are harassing them, they're talking about Chicago in 1969. And they say, uh, You like that? He knows, he said no, 68. Okay, now we'll beat your white ass. Um, that is the fine officers of the Chicago Police Department protecting and serving the banksters and the gangsters of Chicago and the racists. Um, some things never change. Some things only change if you make them change yourself and you do something about it. God forbid they have beer making equipment in the apartment they were staying in. I mean, it's just, it's, it's folks, I've had the, them try to do this to me. Uh, Luke Radowski of We Are Change, founder of We Are Change. What do you make of this? Alex, there's so much to get into, especially our coverage here. Uh, this night we got pulled over earlier in the day. We were at the bail hearings for the NATO 3. The NATO 3 that are facing terrorist charges, we were there. We were the first ones to do a live report uh, outside the courtroom how this was a pure entrapment. The defense clearly stated that undercover agents supplied the explosive devices and instigated the call for violence. We were there reporting on that. A very weird situation occurred when we were live streaming later on in that day, and we, I have a feeling that we were almost about to be set up. 
uh, we were staying with somebody because we really can't afford a hotel with one of my friends who is loosely associated uh, with the Occupy Chicago uh, uh, group here. And uh, my friend loosely uh, knew her, and uh, we were staying at our house. We got a phone call that the place we were staying at was being raided, uh, that there was police officers inside. The person couldn't get inside. Uh, we broadcasted that message out to everybody on our Twitter, on our Ustream, told everybody this was happening. Uh, later, the same person called us, told us not to tell anybody, not to contact the NLG, uh, not to go there. I sent people there anyway. The place we were staying at, the door was open, the alarm was going off. Our stuff was still there. The person then went missing, wasn't in her apartment. And, uh, we, and as we were talking about how weird this situation was, that our place was surrounded by police officers, after we were done live streaming, we, were, we just contacted, contacted the National Lawyers Guild to get some information. To yeah, they were probably we're getting doing. ready to have you on the news as the terrorist. Instead, they set up these other guys for the beer equipment. Which the media went in and saw the big, I mean, it is a beer equipment, but doesn't matter, you'll probably go to prison for it. Go ahead. The person we were staying with knew the people who were entrapped with that beer equipment. Oh, uh, the see, there you go. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, they're planning to set you up. Yeah, I really, I really have that feeling. We have no solid evidence, but everything points to that right now. And as we were talking about in the car, going to that place, how this may be a setup, how we need to live stream everything, uh, 12 police car vehicles, one with DHS. A DHS van also was there. Uh, undercover cops were there. Three white shirt uh, police officers were there, lieutenant. Uh, they pulled us over. Guns were drawn at us. We were screamed at, told to put our hands out the window. I took my cell phone out the window, and I was live streaming the whole event. Yeah, I saw that. We're going to be doing that at Bilderberg and see you there. I was, I was very lucky I didn't get shot. But police officers then deleted my footage, deleted that footage of them running up to us with guns. Deleted it off my phone, made sure I didn't save. Your stream can't even get the broadcast back up right now. And we were uh, handcuffed. We were questioned. And the weird thing is that the DHS van was there. Uh, they started banging our hard drives, our batteries. Uh, the police officer that I was talking to uh, was looking me straight in the eyes. And then when I asked him why we're getting pulled over, he said our vehicle matched the description that they were looking for. And as he said that, he looked down and started laughing. He started laughing because our car that we're driving in right now has New Mexico plates. I don't think there's many cars here in Chicago right now that have New Look, Mexico Look, obviously, plates. it's a giant narcotics trafficking mafia command base. But I've Alex, seen the footage is, of yeah. these police. They look something right out of a Goodfellas episode. This country is so pathetic. Go ahead. Alex, this is also important to know. We are changing Milwaukee, who I don't even know. I'm looking, you know, we are changing an idea. Other people grasp the idea and start chapters. I met We Are Changing Milwaukee for the first time on the march that day. Or right after they met me, uh, CPD, Chicago Police Department, stopped them. Uh, they put them... Uh, arrested them and took them down to a Homeland Security Fusion Center. And then we are changing Milwaukee when they were inside the Fusion Center. They were questioned. How do you know Lukardowski? What is he wearing? Who is he with? Where is he staying? They're trying to find out uh, details. Yeah, about they want to set you asking, up. They, these are criminals. Asking, yes, DHS at the Fusion Center was asking by me by name. And then later we found out we are changing Minnesota was also pulled over the same style, guns drawn, uh, pulled over by the CPD. Uh, so this is extremely, extremely weird. Later, uh, what we decided to do, we had the live broadcast. We went back to the apartment. Uh, we inspected all of our stuff. First, we inspected our vehicle, made sure nothing was planted in the car. We live streamed when we went back to the apartment, and uh, we checked all of our possessions, went through every little thing, made sure, made sure nothing was planted on us, and then we left looking for another place to stay. And this was late at night. And then my friends who were listening on the police radio said that the police were looking for us and to find out where our final destination Well, Chicago cops, Chicago cops will kill you for fun. They, they can put uh, soft kill chemicals and things like in the food in the refrigerator that will kill you six months later. They do it all the time. It's just because it makes them feel manly to kill some innocent Americans. I mean, yeah. you don't think in America... You're just allowed to have cameras and go cover NATO meeting. What do you think? You're in a free country, pal? We have the best independent journalists with us. We have Tim Cass, Giraffa, the best independent journalists here who are covering everything. Uh, this is a pure form of intimidation, of harassment. We decided 
to stand tall, not be intimidated, not be afraid, and we came out there tomorrow. Uh, we came out there yesterday, and we still continued our work here. Uh, some of our members wanted to go home. Some of our members were freaked out. We are changing Milwaukee as soon as they released. They they got out of this town. We decided well, you know the point, yeah, but if you run today, you'll keep running forever. These yeah. are all martial law drills to intimidate everybody not to protest. That's why all over the country, they'll come out to peaceful anti-war rallies and pepper spray babies and laugh on video. Remember that happened Alex, in... Yeah. It's yeah. also very important that days before the NATO summit, we were here in Chicago. We were at a press conference with the top cop, the, uh, the police chief of Chicago, and we asked him, Will you use agent provocateurs to instigate violence? Will you dress up your police officers to instigate violence? Uh, and the police chief, his answer, it's not our YouTube channel right now, his answer was, what? I never heard that, and he canceled the interview right after I asked that question. He canceled All the press conference. Were mad at me. Yeah, he was doing a press conference, the video's on our YouTube channel, and then we went to the NATO 3 terrorism charges hearing at the court hearing. We were at the press conference of... Uh, the prosecution of the police chief, of top Chicago pros prosecutors, and they wouldn't answer any questions about the undercover agents who entrapped these three young kids who instigated the call for violence. At least that's what the defense is saying right well, now. Well, sir, let me they just stop you. Let me just questions. stop you for a minute, Luke. I mean, you obviously understand how dangerous and criminal these people are. In Illinois, they've sent state prosecutors down to, to, to try to help the, the, the counties put people in prison for life for filming and taping police in public. So these they would love to put you in a solitary confinement for life. They think you should be killed for the First Amendment. These people are basically like Stalin supporters. I mean, they would have done great in Stalin's system, and they want to kill America. They're so close to getting rid of the Bill of Rights, and you keep exercising it, and they can't stand it. So what seems to be happening is the Chicago Police Department, possibly in conjunction, or possibly, probably in conjunction with international intelligence fuckers, uh, basically are trying to set up the Occupy movement and individuals within it to look like terrorists so that then they can apply the new laws they just passed in the NDAA to Occupy protesters and they can declare America, well they already have declared America, a war zone. And so in this war zone now, anyone can be labeled a terrorist whether or not they have committed any crime, as you've just seen. Here, for your viewing pleasure, I give you three individuals, American citizens, just like yourself, charged with terrorism. That makes them enemy combatants. And if the government effectively prosecutes them for terrorism, well, we have set a precedent that any American citizen anywhere may have anything done to him that the government chooses. And we are back to the Spanish Inquisition. So, if you are going to the G20 or the G8 uh, summit in Chicago, or if you're there already, go to cryptome.com and check out the, uh, the documents they have recently leaked from the Chicago NATO Police Department that uh, talk about the way the police are planning on treating protesters and media, and you can be prepared and, and know what their plans are because they know what your plans are, because they can tap your cell phone and follow your Facebook account, watch, watch you through your little camera screen, listen to you through the speakers. Police have uh, also threatened to use the sound cannon on the protesters. Um, so, you know, wear earplugs. U.S. war vets 
threw away a bunch of their medals. Uh, all of their medals, actually. Um, yesterday, in front of the NATO summit, they... Uh, it was in protest of the conduct of the Iraq war, and they stood in front of the line of stormtroopers dressed in black protecting the NATO summit, and took their medals, threw them away in shame, because they were ashamed of what the war represented and what our country is becoming. I'm representing Afghans for Peace. We're a global Afghan-led peace movement uh, speaking out against the occupation and war in Afghanistan. And we're here to uh, protest uh, NATO and, and call on all NATO representatives to end this inhumane, illegal, barbaric war against our home country and our people. I'm Graham Klempner. I was a United States Army Ranger. I spent three years in the military and deployed to Afghanistan. This is the Global War on Terrorism medal. Anybody who serves uh, post-9-11 in the United States military serves in the Global War on an adjective. What are you doing with it today? I'm going to be turning it back into the generals at NATO to demonstrate that I reject the medal, I reject what it means, and I reject uh, any affiliation with this war. This war has changed so many lives, and it's changed my own, and it's changed hers and so many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, and it's not accomplishing the original goals. I joined because I wanted to help women. I wanted to uh, be the patriarchal savior who came in and fixed the problems, and I didn't understand that uh, I was actually the one making the problems worse. And what is the reconciliation that will happen today between U.S. military and Afghans for peace? Go ahead. Well, uh, part of this whole process is starting the process of reconciliation, which means that we're actually listening to each other. We practice active listening, hearing where the other people are coming from. Uh, we have a long way to go to come together and, and for us to overcome a lot of the guilt and a lot of the shame that we as soldiers and veterans feel for what we participated in. And we want to start creating instead of destroying. And it's the first time an Afghan-led peace movement is now working side by side with a veteran-led peace movement. And so this is how, this is the beginning of, of of, of something new, something something better. So reconciliation and peace. Mama, mama, can't you see what the NATO's done to me? What the NATO's done to me? When instead of liberating the people, I was liberating their oil fields. One by one, they tossed them. Medals of honor, medals of service, it didn't matter. And I have one word for this global war on terrorism declaration, and that is shame. This group of veterans wants the war in Afghanistan to end. With the people of Iraq and the people of Afghanistan, I am deeply sorry for the destruction that we have caused in those countries and around the globe. I am proud to stand on this stage with my fellow veterans and my Afghan sisters. I'm giving them back. My name is Chris Moberg. I was part of the invasion of Iraq in 2003. And out of love and respect, out of the Iraqi people and the people of Afghanistan, I'm going to return these representations of hate and destruction back where they came from. So that's all for our headline story.